Good evening, uh, Wildcat parents. I want to thank you for uh, watching our video tonight. Uh, I'm Justin Cutts. I'm the principal here at Whitney High School and have uh, everybody here introduce themselves. I'm Eric Means, the assistant principal uh, for the fall. I'm Jeff Dietrich. I'm the, another assistant principal. I got the alphabet I through R. Jason Fordbach, assistant principal and also the athletic director. We want to thank all of you for sending your questions in. I know this year is very different than anything we've ever done. Um, there's a lot of questions. There's a lot of kind of anxiousness that's going around as we kind of prepare to have students come back on campus. Uh, our team here has been working really hard with the district and the county to just make our school as safe as it possibly can be. Um, and I know, again, sometimes we don't get all those answers out. And so this is really a chance for us to ask or answer some specific questions uh, with as much detail as we can. Obviously, as, as we get closer to Monday, if you continue to have questions, please feel free to reach out to us and, and we'll do our best to, uh, to get back to you. So uh, that being said, uh, we compiled a list of all the questions that were, that were emailed in and kind of grouped them together. We're gonna go around and each of us uh, will kind of answer them as best, um, best as we can. So one of the big things that obviously the differences uh, that we're looking at this year is the schedule. Um, we switched from uh, rotating uh, eight classes uh, for each day uh, to a block schedule where we have our, obviously your students have four classes right now. And so that, that in itself is a huge change, not to mention everything else going on. So that creates a lot of questions. Um, in addition to that, because of social distancing manage, measures, uh, we're going to, we went to a, a two lunch schedule and a two brunch schedule for our articulation days. So those schedules have been shared with you I encourage you to check our website if you need to see specific times, but I wanted to outline uh, some of those things and what they'll look like, especially in the hybrid model. So your students have been put into an A group or a B group. Um, most of you have gotten that email about what group your student is in, so you know that now. Um, but you'll have one day where your student is on campus. A groups are Tuesday, Thursday. B groups are Wednesday, Friday. And then the Mondays rotate um, every, other, every other day, or every other Monday, excuse me. Uh, is a different group. So on those days where your student is on campus, um, they will go to their four teachers in four different classes. Um, like I mentioned, there are two brunches or two lunches. So depending on who your third block teacher is, that will depend on what lunch that you have. And so you'll go through that, that schedule and you'll follow it uh, just like you would any other um, school day as you would have, uh, would have in the past. On the day that you're not on campus though, um, there's a lot of different things going on. Uh, one of the things is that we are required to take attendance and we're doing that during second block. Um, I know there's some questions out there about second block and uh, what you do if some students don't have a class. So, Mr. Dietrich, do you want to talk about that real quick? Yeah, if you are a student that has an off period for second block because of our scheduling matrix, um, you are to stay on campus if you wish and you're going to be placed in a library under social distance guidelines. If uh, you wish to leave campus, you can leave and come back. You have approximately 80 minutes or so um, to do so, because technically you're not scheduled for a class. Okay, thank you. I did forget uh, one of the other questions we had about lunches with the two lunches was kind of some of the safety precautions that we've taken and how do students get lunch and um, safely uh, social distance. So Mr. Forbach, did you wanna go through that real quick? Cause I already forgot that one. Yeah, so in, in regards to the lunch period, uh, obviously with the two lunch schedules, some different things going on. So we've had to paint certain lines on campus um, to house students inside those lines near the cafeteria, um, just to keep them out of the classroom area because those classrooms allow them to be utilized for the kids that have class during the first lunch and vice versa. So there are lunch lines, we're gonna ask that you stay inside of those. Um, one of the big things obviously is also to make sure that the students are social distanced um, during the during lunch period. So maintain that six foot spacing. Um, we are asking the students to keep a mask on unless they're eating or drinking. Obviously at that point they can remove their mask, but if they're not, then we're asking them to keep their mask on per the guidance we've received. Um, and then in regards to the cafeteria, there'll be arrows and there'll be X's on the ground. So there'll be an entrance area where you'll come in, you'll socially distance in line You'll get your food from the cafeteria and then you'll exit out a different door. And so um, we're asking students to please follow those, those, uh, that process has been set up. And then obviously when you're done eating lunch, if all students can make sure they just clean up all their trash and, and clean up their area and throw it all in the garbage, that would be great. And so um, those are kind of some of the new situations we have occurring at lunch this year. Thank you. So 
the next piece of this is really uh, in terms of one of the biggest questions we've been getting is is what what does school look like from a synchronous versus an asynchronous uh, standpoint? Obviously, synchronous being when you're in class with the teacher and it's live versus the days where you're you're learning off campus. And so, Mr. Means, could you talk just a little bit about what that that dynamic will look like? Sure. So, in the synchronous learning uh, process, you'll be here on campus. So, if you're Group A, um, you're going to be here on that first Monday. Uh, with your class uh, and your teachers. Um, group B will not. Your teachers, uh, for the asynchronous part, for that group that is off campus, your teachers will be creating some assignments, uh, activities on Schoology, uh, uh, the platform that we've been using um, for our online learning. And uh, you'll be required to do those particular activities in the days that you are not on campus in preparation for when you are back in campus. So in a class, it could be um, that the notes are online, you'll be taking notes, and then when you come into camp campus the next day, um, you'll be doing an activity, uh, a lab, something that has to do with that information that you were required to look at uh, the day that you were off campus. So that's kind of the difference between that synchronous and asynchronous. So every day you should be doing something, whether you're at home or uh, if you're at school. Okay, thank you. One of the other pieces, I think, and, and this is a big concern for all of us, is, is some of the safety precautions that we're taking as students uh, come back on campus. Uh, the biggest one that we've gotten questions on is obviously masks. Um, obviously, all, all of us are wearing ours. Uh, you'll see us wearing them all day long. Um, and we uh, have that same requirement of all our students. So, Mr. Means, you want to talk a little bit more about PPE and masks in, in general? Yeah, the Placer County Health Department um, has, has said that in order for us to open and be on campus, uh, that we're supposed to be wearing masks, whether we're indoors or outdoors. The only time where we can take that mask off, like uh, we talked about a couple minutes ago, is if we're eating or drinking. But once we finish that eating, we gotta put the mask uh, right back on. Um, if you forget your mask, uh, go ahead and come down to the office and the assistant principal's uh, entrance, and there will be, uh, we have some um, disposable masks that will be available for people if they happen to forget uh, to bring their mask to school. Um, if you aren't uh, going to be wearing a mask, um, then the guidance is that you're going to be uh, excluded from campus. So it's extremely important for all of us uh, to help maintain uh, the safety and health of the student body, the staff, and the faculty here on campus and to keep going back to school uh, that we are all wearing our masks uh, at all times. Um, along with, with washing our hands, you know, saying happy birthday twice uh, as you're scrubbing, um, that's kind of the, the mantra for uh, our hand cleaning um, and uh, when you're in the classrooms if you aren't able to wash your hands with soap and water uh, then there'll be some hand sanitizer that's available uh, for you as well um, the the teachers will be cleaning desks you'll have opportunities to wipe down the desks before you sit down um, and so we're really trying to maintain some cleanliness uh, so that we can continue to go back to school uh, throughout the uh, rest of this particular term Thank you. And I think uh, you kind of touched on it. I think one of the best things I've heard is uh, we're taking all these precautions, especially the mask piece, because we're happy that we're getting to move into this hybrid piece. The more we do our parts, uh, the faster we can get back to where all students are back all the time. Yeah. Uh, if we don't, and obviously the numbers go the other way in, in the county, um, then we end up you know, going the opposite way. And that's really not what we want to see. So Mr. Feuerbach, is there anything else you wanted to add on um, safety precautions on campus? Yeah, just a couple things to kind of kind of add on to what Mr. Means said over there. Um, mm -hmm. We are painting arrows on the ground um, at certain gates. So in other words, you come in one gate, you, you leave out the other. We're asking that students obey those arrows. And also in the main walkways through our campus, um, you're gonna see we kind of set it up like you drive a car. So if you're going one way, you're on the right. The other, the other group is on the left coming at you. And so um, we're asking to the best of their ability that students follow those arrows as they make their way from one class to the, to the next or from from break or lunch to their next class. And so um, just please please abide by those. And then also just in regards to the classrooms, um, we're asking the students, you know, stand outside those classroom doors, socially distance. The teacher will prompt them to come in. Um, once they come in, they'll, they'll wipe down their work area. They'll throw the wipe away. They'll sanitize their hands. And then they'll sit down at their desk. And so um, that's gonna be kind of our general classroom process there, which uh, Mr. Diedrich did make a video explaining that. And then every night, um, our campus will go through a, um, will be, it'll be disinfected and cleaned by our custodial staff. Thank you.
So you did mention uh, the d uh, video Mr. Dietrich's putting together, and I, I wanted to give him a second to talk about that, because one of the questions we had was about freshmen and them coming on campus and how many of them may not have uh, be familiar with the campus and what it looks like and how to get certain places. Uh, one thing I do want to reassure every parent and student is that we will have a lot of people out on campus, especially the first few days, to help our new students uh, find different buildings and classrooms. Um, so we know that's going to be an issue. But Mr. Dietrich, do you want to talk to us a little bit about the uh, presentation that you'll be sending out here in the next uh, day or two? Yeah, there's going to be um, a presentation coming out in the next couple days uh, that has multiple parts. One, I wanted to make sure we oriented our freshmen to campus. So there's going to be a campus tour, kind of a guided tour. I, uh, I filmed with some help, and that's going to be going out again in a couple of days. That's embedded into a larger presentation that encompasses just basically the general reopening guidelines for students. Um, just the reminders, we want to get that out to them before they come to campus on the 21st. So that document, uh, again, we'll, we'll, we'll all kind of take turns taking you through that document. Um, students will have to sign like an e-form, uh, verifying they've read, you know, kind of watched the video. And we'll be going through next week checking uh, which students have not completed that, that video demonstration. Um, in there, again, will be how students are supposed to behave um, just in a traditional school year with discipline and, and some of our procedures and norms, but also the things that are new because of the hybrid. Um, so all the stuff the students should know kind of where they should walk, where they should be in classrooms, how they're supposed to wipe their hands, are they wearing their mask, all that stuff's outlined. Um, in addition, we talk about just the general behavior expectations we have on campus, where to find your counseling office, all, you know, where to find the attendance office. Um, so it'll be a, kind of a complete uh, new orientation for all students, um, which will be extremely helpful for the new students and our freshmen, but also will be great reminders for our other students that have been here for a couple of years because there's a lot of things that have changed because of the hybrid model. So again, I would expect that in the next, you know, 24 to 48 hours, hopefully. So that'll be coming out. All right, thank you. Some of these other ones are, um, I don't know, we get a little more specific and kind of off safety necessarily, but uh, uh, Mr. Feuerbach, uh, one of the questions we got a lot of was on parking. Uh, do you want to talk about parking and, and how that'll look this year? Yeah, so in regards to parking, as we enter the hybrid model um, with only half of our students being here on a specific day, um, we've made a decision at this point to not sell the, the general parking permits um, just because we do have plenty of spots. And so um, in regards to the general student lot, um, you, the students can drive to campus, they can park in, that, in any of those spots. Um, they are numbered, but they can park in any number that they want. Um, obviously, please avoid the ones that say reserved as those are for, for staff and or teachers. Um, the seniors, uh, the leadership class is, is getting ready to do some stuff with the senior parking spots so those I think there's 112 spots those spots will be designated for certain seniors so you know if, if you don't have a certain senior spot please do not park in those spots as those are certain student spots but in regards to the general parking um, anyone can park in that lot okay. and just on a side note to that too we do really encourage you once you get to school uh, get out of your car make sure you have your mask on and just come on campus please don't loiter in the parking lot and hang out again we want to encourage that socially distance, uh, keep ourselves safe. So we appreciate your cooperation with that. Um, next question, we'll go right back to you, Mr. Feuerbach. Uh, big, lots of questions about PE and locker rooms and things like that. What does PE look like? Uh, what are locker room procedures, uh, safety? You wanna to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, so in regards to PE and the locker room. So when the California Department of Public Health issued the guidance for physical education, they tied it into youth sports as well. And so both of those entities are following the same rules and guidance. Um, and one thing we're gonna do in PE is normally all the kids will meet in the large gym where we take roll, and then they go in the locker room and get dressed. Um, as we start the hybrid model, um, every PE class is gonna to report to a designated schedule that will be available in your Aries portal by the end of the week. And so it'll tell you where to report, whether it's the weight room, the pool, the stadium, the large gym, the small gym, you have a specific area you're supposed to report to for your PE class. And so that'll be the first part. Um, the second part is, is as school does open, we will not be utilizing the locker rooms at this time. Um, reason being, we wanna see how, how many kids are actually gonna dress and actually utilize the lockers before we come up with those processes and protocols. And so kind of as we move forward with PE, the biggest thing will be, you know, you won't be required to wear a certain outfit. So in other words, in the past, it's, it's always been Vegas gold shorts and a maroon shirt. 
um, has been the PE attire. And we had PE uniforms for sale. You, you could buy them or you could go buy your own in those colors. Um, and you had to be dressed in order to get points. That's not the case. Um, we are asking that students wear appropriate clothing so they can participate in their PE classes, but they do not have to be in a specific PE uniform. And so um, students will obviously be gaining points for participation in the class, but those participation points aren't based on whether or not you are in the appropriate PE uniform. And so just make sure you wear clothes or bring a pair, you know, if you're wearing shoes that you can't run in, you might want to just throw a pair of shoes in your bag that you can definitely um, participate in. And so um, from there, like I said, we're going to see how many students will actually want to use the locker room. And then from there, um, as this hybrid model evolves, we'll then at that point issue the processes and protocols to use the lockers. Um, also, just because of the guidance, we've had to obviously change the curriculum in some of the PE classes. And so um, some of the classes will see modified lessons and or units based on the guidance we've received from the California uh, Department of Public Health. So other than that, it's kind of the, the, uh, the gist of what's going on in the PE world. And I think it's also important to note there um, with, the, with the curriculum is that as guidelines change for us about what we can and can't do, uh, PE will obviously continue to evolve over the, the course of the semester and, and hopefully into the spring too. So as changes happen, we'll continue to communicate those, uh, especially to our students who have PE right now and into the spring too um, when things we start to get into the to the second term uh, next question we have was around ap classes this actually touches on actually the block schedule not necessarily um covid 19 or anything like that but a great question of what do we do because a lot some of our ap classes are in the fall and so the instruction goes from you know august until december or early january um, but the ap tests aren't until april um, so what what happens you know because it's a long time to forget all the things you learn. So a lot of what our teachers will do uh, will be some kind of review sessions when we get closer to the AP test. So even though they've done all the coursework, um, there'll be times where they, they hand or send out um, review pieces and it could look like a lot of different formats. This is the first time that we've done it here at Whitney. Um, so I'm sure our teachers will be reaching out to other teachers who from districts where they teach in that block system already to see what they do. Um, so I'm sure that that information will be shared um, as they get closer to the end of the term. And then again, we'll be reaching out to those students uh, who want to, to do some review work um, later in the spring. So that's kind of where we're at with AP. Uh, next up, uh, questions about technology and coming back to campus, uh, Chromebooks and one-to-one. -one. Mr. Means, you want to talk about that a little bit? Sure. So um, the district has given us the okay to try and go one-to-one, uh, -one, which means one uh, device Chromebook uh, for every one student. Um, this is a great time to do this because uh, most students have been utilizing Chromebooks or a device uh, as we've been doing distance learning. Um, and with a lot of the health precautions, if we have shared devices here on campus, then there's a whole cleaning protocol that we have to go through for each one of those devices. Just increases the chances of, uh, of spreading uh, any type of virus. So um, we're going to be sending out a survey uh, tomorrow morning to try and hopefully get an idea as to how many students already have a device that they're able to bring to school and how many students uh, have a school device that they checked out and then how many students will be needing to uh, check out a device uh, from school. Um, so look for that survey to come out. We'll need the answers uh, hopefully by Wednesday so that we can start uh, planning on getting those Chromebooks available for checkout uh, starting next week. So uh, the plan right now is for every student to uh, be bringing their device to school um, every day so that they uh, have it and can utilize uh, those particular options while they're uh, on campus. A lot of teachers still want to do a lot of the digital uh, turn-in of assignments and this is a great way to to accomplish that. Okay, thank you very much. Mm -hmm. One of the biggest uh, concerns I think we all have as educators is really the social emotional support that we need to provide for our students. Uh, this is a a stressful situation it's not normal and so it's it's uh, concerning to us we really want to focus on that when you look at our articulation schedule for Mondays there's social emotional time built in um, our counselors will be giving out a, a survey just to do kind of a weekly check-in with their students um, or I guess bi-weekly uh, so that, that will be happening and they will be following up with the results if they have uh, concerns based on that those responses um, in addition to that, there's a lot of other things going on with counseling um, that they're working on. Mr. Dietrich, do you want to touch on some of those? Yeah, I just thought they, they've done an amazing job trying to get us set up. This schedule is totally unique for all of us, um, trying to load 
students in the A group, B group, uh, four classes instead of eight classes. Uh, so it's been a it's been a grind the first uh, month of the school year for sure. Um, later this evening or this evening, they'll be coming out with their own presentation for families, um, kind of offering up the information that you guys need to uh, better understand what they do and what they can do for your student. Um, please email them questions about grades, questions about classes, etc. Um, they operate by alphabet, kind of like the assistant principals. Um, so again, Mr. Means has A through H, I have I through R, and Mr. Feuerbach has S through Z. The counseling world, uh, Mr. Blate has A through D, Mrs. Carlson is E through K, Mrs. Leroy is L through Q, and then Mr. Floyd is R through Z. So the four of them work in cooperation, and Mrs. Teens is their secretary, and they're, um, again, they'll be presenting to you also this evening. So, um, Okay, thank you. Last couple questions are, are, you know, things that we all hope will happen at some point this year. One was about, will we have school dances? Uh, the other one was, what does graduation look like? And I'll tell you, there's nothing better to me than uh, getting to hear Pomp and Circumstance, my favorite song in the world. And I hope that we get to hear it out on the stadium this year uh, with, you know, a lot of people uh, there. Uh, at this point, I can't promise that. Obviously, we don't know what, uh, what June is gonna look like um, same thing for school dances. I mean, we, we enjoy, um, you know, being able to host those events. We know our kids or our students really enjoy them. Um, but at this point, we're just not, not at that point where we can say we can do them. So, uh, we'll continue to monitor and continue to work with the county and the state to give us, uh, you know, some guidance on what we can and can't do. And as we know, we'll, we'll continue to communicate with you. Um, so again, I, uh, I, I will reiterate what Mr. Dietrich said about our counselors to say that I, I am just so impressed with all of our staff and the hard work they've put in uh, to get us to this point. Um, they've done a phenomenal job. Uh, you, as a parent, you're, you're, your students are in, your, your kids are in great hands. Um, and you know, I just feel uh, just really lucky to, to work with such a great group of people and, and just happy that, uh, that this is the group that we're gonna, we're gonna roll this out with. So. Thank you for uh, watching this presentation. Um, hope you look forward to uh, your teacher's presentations tonight. You learn more about the teacher and the class that your students have been taking um, and a little bit about what this transition is gonna look like specifically for, for each subject. So um, again, we're, we're available by email or phone. Feel free to reach out with us, to us if you have questions um, as well as our counselors or our teachers. So with that being said, have a great night.